to you I lift up my soul, O my God. In you I have trusted. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies exalt over me, and let none who hope in you be put to shame. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. This Mass is being offered for your intentions. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and Judah. In those days, in that time, I will raise up for David a just shoot. He shall do what is right and just in the land. In those days, Judah shall be safe and Jerusalem shall dwell secure. This is what they shall call her, the Lord, our justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm responds, To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God my Savior, and for you I wait all the day. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. All the paths of the Lord are kindness and constancy toward those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord is with those who fear him and his covenant for their instruction. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we have for you, so as to strengthen your hearts, to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his holy ones. Amen. Finally, brothers and sisters, we earnestly ask and assert you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us how you should conduct yourself to please God, and as you are conducting yourselves, you do so even more. For you know that instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Show us, Lord, your love, and grant us your salvation. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on earth's nations will be in dismay. 
perplexed by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will die of fright in anticipation of what is coming upon them, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But when these signs begin to happen, stand erect and raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of daily life, and that day catch you by surprise like a trap. For that day will assault everyone who lives on the face of the earth. Be vigilant at all times and pray that you have the strength to escape the tribulations that are imminent and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Happy New Year, everyone. Yep, we begin a new liturgical year. We're now in the first Sunday of Advent, a season of preparation for the coming of Christ, and a beautiful season that we celebrate. But always please remember, make it to confession over the course of this Advent season. Advent is a penitential season. I know it's difficult, and I always say this to you, I apologize, but it is difficult to realize it's a penitential season, but it's a penitential season. Uh, it's difficult to realize because it's going to end with the beautiful birth of Christ. You know, we're going to celebrate the birth of a baby. That's a beautiful celebration. And then as we're walking around, you know, the houses and everything are decorated beautifully. Even, <laughs> even the malls, but they started like about, you know, six months ago for Christmas. But everything's decorated beautifully, so it's hard to see the penance in it, you know. Uh, but you know, it's, it's easy in Lent because it ends with the Passion of Christ, but it is difficult in this. But if you do have that opportunity, please uh, make it a goal to get to the Sacrament of Confession over this season. What a, can't think of an even better way to prepare for the coming of Christ. And that is what we are doing, and that is what Advent is all about. Advent literally translates to, to coming, and we are preparing for the coming of Christ. And the beautiful thing is, uh, what we see in the Gospel today, and again, we have this kind of apocalyptic language, but we have to remember, apocalypse means a lifting of the veil to see clearly that Christ is coming. And that's why I like where he gives all this stuff, all these visions, and they sound very frightening. And what does Christ tell us? Lift up your head, stand erect, because Christ is coming. You have nothing to fear. Christ is coming. Why would you fear the coming of Christ? You know, don't surrender to the language uh, of fear or anything like that. Stand erect, keep your head high. Christ is coming. And the beautiful thing also is this gospel is really flying. For us, we don't think of it too much. Uh, but the gospel is really flying in the face of a lot of the philosophies that were going on at Jesus's time, especially, and it is making up, uh, um, making a return now, Stoicism, you know, and there, there are, you know, nice teachings of Stoics, but one of the unfortunate teachings of Stoics, which was a very prevalent philosophy at the time of Christ, was that, um, History wasn't really pointing at anything. It was just kind of circular, and it was like 3,000-year cycles of, you know, building up, building up, destroying, 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 building up, building up, destroying, destroying. And it was something that you were constantly stuck on, like a treadmill of activity. It wasn't, you know, it was just looping, basically, is what was happening. But Christ is showing us that in, for a Christian, history has a definite end. It has a definite point that it's going towards, and that is the return of Christ. That is what the end is. We're not in on a treadmill or anything like that, looping and looping and looping. Now, history does repeat itself. I strongly believe that, but the end does not change. The end is Christ, and that is what we're going towards. And he's giving us a reminder in this first week, do not grow drowsy. And unfortunately, my friends, we kind of, we left out six verses that I think were are crucial and it's not like I did the short version they're, they're just not in the first the the gospel reading on this first Sunday but we hear about that vision and then Christ is talking about do not grow drowsy or anything like and that's the language he's using no carousing no drunkenness anything 
But those six verses that we miss are where Christ actually, you know, he teaches, he's teaching in the temple, then he pulls back. And he has quiet time with his heavenly father. And then he comes back again, and that's where he says, beware your hearts, do not become drowsy. He comes back to them and teaches again. So we see a valuable lesson again. Unfortunately, those verses were left out, but it really has a powerful teaching of, if we want to prepare, we're always gonna be around people. That's, that's really the beauty of being a human being in a world, but it's also part and parcel of the time. You know, everybody's having parties and everything, office parties, where you, you name it, things are going, you know, everything's starting to wake up again. So people are coming together again. And so you're always gonna be around people, but don't re remember to really prepare. Don't be afraid to occasionally pull back. Pull back, have that quiet time with the Lord, and that'll help you not become drowsy or, you know, get caught up in the anxieties of daily life as so many of us do, especially at this time. You know, give that quiet time to the Lord. That really is one of the beautiful first messages of this uh, Advent season on this first Sunday of Advent. Give quiet time to the Lord. Go to confession. Those are the ways we prepare for the coming of Christ. That is what will keep us uh, you know, sober and alert. And that is what is asked of us at this time. So God bless you. Again, Happy New Year. And let us begin this beautiful Advent season, season and use this opportunity to kind of go on a quiet retreat to prepare for the coming of Christ. God bless you all. Please stand for the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Advent is a time of waiting for the Lord, united in the joy of the gospel. With confidence, we call upon the Father and pray. That this Advent will be the ch for the church, a faith-filled journey toward a deeper union with Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to warfare, that weapons will be dismantled to become instruments of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the renewal of our parish during the liturgical year, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the season of Advent will be an occasion for a deeper personal encounter with Jesus Christ, especially in the sacrament of confession. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That in this time of active vigilance, we will show special concern for the poor, the sick, the grieving, and those in dire need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to intensify our preparation for the coming of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray also for the men and women in our military and our first responders that they come home safely and soon, that they also be um, kept safe during any kind of violence. And surely also, truly let us remember our military at this time as they're away from their families during this season where we celebrate and we enjoy so much of our families at this time. Let us remember them at this time that um, the loneliness does not become overwhelming 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, during this holy season of Advent, keep us watchful and alert. Fill our hearts with expectations so that through the hope and tenderness of Christmas, we may shake off our indifference. We ask this as we ask all things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, to our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and open for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Amen. Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you and always. With spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, peace of Christ. Christ. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am I not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Lord will bestow his bounty on and our earth shall yield its increase. The body of Christ. Amen. At this time, we offer our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk in the passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow for the blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Again, <laughs> Happy New Year. Have a wonderful Advent. And please try to get the confession. God bless you.